Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to show you what I do with some of these garage sale finds that I just picked up over the weekend. I've got a lot of rusty and crusty and old things to work with, so stay tuned and come along with me as I create some beautiful decor. First, I'm going to work on this big pot. This is something that I found at the garage sale for two bucks and I thought it was beautiful. I really love the crackle in the green, but I wanted to switch it up a little bit and make it a little bit more farmhouse looking. So the first thing I'm going to do is spray it with Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Finish. And the reason I'm doing that just on the shiny part is to make sure that my paint sticks. I'm going to paint the green portion just with sort of a dry brush, but a little bit thicker than that. Just one really rough coat. I wanna have a little bit of that green showing through. That will also give it some texture along with the brush strokes that I'm using. I'm just using a regular flat white house paint that you can buy right off the shelf from Walmart. You don't always have to use chalk paint or specialty paints. You can definitely just get away with regular household paints. That's one of the reasons why I spray all of my shiny projects first with the matte clear finish. It gives this regular household paint something to grip to. I had put my paintbrush down and taken a step back and then decided that I really didn't like the way the brown and the white now was kind of clashing. So I'm just dry brushing whatever's left on my paintbrush with the white and look at how all of that beautiful detail is just starting to pop. So I'm going to continue doing this for the bottom and I'm also going to do the rim all along the top. If you like what you see so far, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow because I get more views that way. Last year I made myself a lemon tree and I actually replayed that video for you a couple of weeks ago. But it's just in this simple coffee can and I wanted to upgrade this tree a little bit. So I thought my new pot would be the perfect addition to this lemon tree. I'm going to take it all apart. Just got a whole bunch of foam in there and some rocks down at the bottom. And it is hot glued like 90 to the bottom of this can. So I'm going to work on getting that out and then I'll show you how I I redo it in the new pot. I do a lot of woodworking and all of these little bits and pieces that are scraps, I always hang on to them and this is the perfect opportunity to use them. I'm going to go ahead and tuck them into the pot just flat because I want to be able to just elevate my lemon tree a little bit higher. I don't want it sitting all the way down to the bottom. So I'm just going to keep on working with all of these pieces of wood, wedging them in, making sure that they fit really well and they're nice and snug. I have a larger piece in the bottom that's going to be the base of where I'm going to be able to glue the actual lemon tree on. So I'm adding a few more, just hot gluing them to make sure that they are secure. And then I'm going to go ahead and use some more hot glue and add the lemon tree. And then I've just got to hold it until the hot glue has a chance to set. I'm going to reuse the same foam that I had in the can, just wedge it all the way around and make sure that the styrofoam that's holding my branch or my tree is going to stay really solid. I don't want this to wiggle around when I move it. I'll also add a little bit of hot glue around the edges just to make sure all of that foam stays in place too. Finally, I'm just going to reuse the moss that I had used in the coffee can and just lay it around on top. I don't have quite enough of this type of moss, but I don't have anything left in my stash. So once I head out to the store, I'll be able to grab a little bit more. But I think this elevated my lemon tree to a much higher level. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous put together with this pot.
all of these crusty things I got for three bucks at the garage sale. So I think this pot would have been about a dollar. Anyhow, I just decided to clean it up and I'm going to be adding three of these little spindles as feet. These were the top of bed posts and I just thought they're the perfect color to complement this pot. Using my weld bond glue, I'm just going to put them on and just set it aside to dry. Now this did take a couple of days to cure just because it was a little cooler outside, but I didn't want to use any hot glue because that will, it doesn't work with metal. To be honest i've never been able to get hot glue to stick with metal so i just thought i'll be patient and get these on there and i think it turned out absolutely gorgeous I'd like to take a quick second to thank all of my current viewers and subscribers. I really appreciate all the support that you give me by watching my videos. If you are new to my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. I would love it if you could hit that red button and stick around a while. My idea for this rake head was to put it on a board. I'm just using my Hoto brand new tape measure to measure that it's 14 inches. And I already have a board that's painted here that's about 22 inches. I decided to lay the rake head down. So the part where the handle would be is going to be the top of the wood board. And I'm using some of these pipe straps to hold it in place. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just pushing in a little screw and now I'm using my brushless drill from Hoto and it just works so easily. It's a smart tool. It plugs in with a USB-C charger and I think that is so convenient and it's really lightweight, which really helps with my arthritis. Hoto tools are amazing. I have their glue gun. I have the tape measure, which is part of the screwdriver toolkit. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But this drill is something that I really enjoy using. And I think for some first time beginner people who are just starting out with their power tools. This is compact and small and it's super easy to use. I'll have a link for the drill down in my description box. I'm switching out the driver bit for a really tiny drill bit because I need to do some pilot holes for the eye hooks that I'm going to be using to hang a chain which will then hang the sign. So super easy to change things out. You just spin the chuck around and it opens up or closes however you need to do it. This is a tiny little drill bit. I'm just going to eyeball my spacing and just give it a little bit of a push. So easy to do. Pre-drilling the hole makes it super easy to just hand tighten the eye hooks right into it. And then I'm just going to use this chain that I got from the Dollar Tree. They have them on their baskets, I think. So I just grabbed a couple of baskets and I just pulled off the chains and I'm going to go ahead and use this to hang my little rake hook. And I think this turned out really sweet. This Hoto toolkit is absolutely gorgeous. And again, if you are just starting out with some tools for crafting or building, these are the perfect size. They're weighted nicely. That hammer is so nice to use. This is the precision screwdriver, which is battery operated. So you charge it with a USB-C and it works really well. It has a really nice ergonomic and sleek look to it. So you can get into some tight spaces. There's some pliers. There are an adjustable wrench and of course the tape measure that I've already used. 
I am super impressed with Hoto Tools, the quality of their products and how well they work. I was skeptical at first with that drill. I didn't think that just having a USB-C charging lithium battery would give me enough power, but I have power and then some. So make sure you go down to my description box and click on the link for Hoto Tools and check them out. For this project, I am using a board that's just a scrap piece. It's really rough on one side, but really nice and smooth on the other side. I'm taking my electric sander and I'm just going to round out the edges and the sides a little bit. Make sure there aren't any splinters on it. I thought it would be fun to use this other round piece that I did pick up at the same garage sales. It was twice as long I just used my miter saw to chop it in half and now I'm going to take this board over to my table saw and just cut out some grooves on either side so I can fit this hollow piece of wood right on top of the board. I put some weld bond glue down in the crevices and then I added some hot glue on the back to give the weld bond glue a chance to set. I'm going to add some fasteners to the handle and the board just to make sure that it stays put. I'm undoing my cordless drill here from Hoto and adding a tiny little drill bit so I can pre-drill for my screws. I've got two more of these little pipe straps and I'm going to use the needle nose pliers that came with my Hoto set to straighten them out and make them into an L shape. And that is what I'm going to use to attach the handle to the board much better. This pair of pliers, this is the first time I'm using them and I really like them. They feel very comfortable in your hand and they have a really good grip on them. To put the screws in, I'm going to use the Hoto Electric Cordless Screwdriver. It has a really neat shape to it, and all of the materials of these tools are made with a really soft, it almost feels like suede, so it's really comfortable to hold in your hand. I've chosen the drill bit that I need, which came from the included drill bits that they have there, and I'm going to go ahead and attach the bracket. The screwdriver has a really convenient button that you can actually press and hold at the same time that you're just gripping the screwdriver. You're going to see me push the button right there. It also has a reverse button if you need to take anything out. I've come back inside now and I'm going to give this board a coat of antique wax. And what I've done here is just sprayed some water on it because that will help me just to dilute the antique wax. I don't have it in a little bottle yet with some water to dilute it. I'm still working out of the original bottle. I probably will do that just because it makes it much more convenient and I won't have to use a spray bottle all the time. But for now, this is what I decided to do and it worked out really well. And you can see that color is blending right in with the handle. I'm going to attach this fun rooster hanger to the board and I'm going to use my screwdriver one more time. Really easy to get it in this board. I didn't have to pre-drill because this is a piece of soft pine and it went in really well. To camouflage the brand new screws and make them look old like the rooster, I'm just using a little bit of antique wax and dabbing it on just to dull the shine. My local Dollarama store had these cute little mini utensils for gardening and they would be for indoor houseplants. That's why they are so tiny. But to make them look a little bit old, I'm also going to use some of the antique wax. Just dull down the shine a little bit. I'm also going to put some on the handles of the wood pieces and actually that sort of leathery kind of blue color that's there as well. Just to make everything look a little bit more old. The last thing I'm going to do is drill a hole through the top so I can put some twine in and hang it somewhere. So I'm using my Hoto drill again and making sure that I have the button pressed to drill and not screw in because that just gives it a little bit extra force. So again, this works so nicely. I love these tools. They're really convenient, small, compact, and really great for that first time crafter. 
I also added just a little touch of greenery to the handle. This last project will just be a double-sided sign on this tag that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to work on taking off all of the paper and smoothing it down. I'm using a sage color of paint that I actually pre-mixed in the bottle. I had a bottle of Martha Stewart antique sky chalk paint and I just found it was too bright so I just added some gray and a couple of other green colors to make a beautiful sage and I'm going to just do the back portion where the sign was originally and the sides because I have something different planned for the top. I found this sweet pack of wood look vinyl pieces at my Dollarama store. They're really nice and small, but look at how pretty they are. I decided to grab the one that has a little bit of sort of a greeny blue color. What I'm going to do is just peel off the back and then stick it on the tag here and then cut out the excess. I put this on just like I would be putting on some contact paper, folded the backing down, smoothed it onto the edge where I needed to start, and then just pulled the backing out from underneath, holding my hand and making sure I don't have any bubbles. It went on really well. I'm just going to crease around the edges and that will help me to get the edges off. I cut out two different designs using my Cricut and for the back of the little sign I'm using the phrase don't mind the weeds we're feeding the bees and I'm just going to go ahead and stick that on and I will have both of these designs available as a free printable on my website. That link is also down in my description box. On the other side of the sign, I'm going to put the words find me in the garden and I'm using white vinyl for this because I just thought it would show up a little bit nicer on this and make it just look a little bit different. So I just thought this would be so cute to hang on the rake and then be able to show people, hey, I'm in the garden, so find me in the garden. Or if you're not in the garden, you could be feeding the bees. Thank you so much for joining me today and watching my video. I hope you enjoyed these projects and got some inspiration to create some fun and almost free garden decor. If you like these, here's a couple more you might enjoy too. Bye for now.